G'day, it's it's Alex here, Victor Kilo 2, Papa Radio Charlie. Um, you'll recall in my last video that I put up, I described the resurrection of this um, donated parts set that someone had given me and uh, all of the progressive repairs along the way to get it back to some sort of order. Um, just just a bit of a summary from the from the last video. Um, the, the radio was, was brought back into, into operation, but it still had a few faults. Um, one of the faults is I still don't have a power supply, and I, I may have to make one of those for this particular project. We'll see how we go. Um, but after much uh, work um, on this particular set, um, it was discovered that the, that the synthesizer was actually a, a crook, and it was wobbling all over the place. So I've decided to make this particular set here my my um, Mark III version of, of the DDS VFO conversion. And the whole point of this particular um, conversion is to try and make a very, very straightforward, easy conversion that perhaps um, many people out there that aren't quite as um, skilled with electronics could possibly have a go at. Rather than let a junked uh, 320 become a doorstop, we can um, try um, to get it back on the air um, using a little bit of modern technology. Now, for this particular conversion, uh, I've decided to go with um, with a, 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 an EDS VFO. Um, this particular one here, you can you can pick this one up from um, from OzQRP.com. This is how it comes in a little pack like this. It's pretty small. Fifty dollars Australian for this particular little kit. I've got another one here I've put together, and that's virtually what it looks like. It's very very tiny, and uh, it's got an OLED display. Okay, so you know, I'll, I'll put this one together just for, for testing and whatnot. Um, look, the main components here that we're looking at is, is the display, um, the encoder, and the two buttons. And these particular buttons here, you can completely program this from those two buttons. So a big advantage to have those two buttons at the front of the set, and the OLED display at the front of the set, and the encoder at the front of the set. So for this particular conversion, I'm going to mark, uh, mount the, the buttons and the encoder off the board, okay? The particular board, um, it, it comes with two outputs, a variable frequency output and a fixed frequency output. Um, for this particular conversion, I'm not going to use the fixed frequency output. I'm going to stick with the original upper sideband only, okay? Um, look, if you wanted to go down the path of making upper and lower sideband, you can certainly use the fixed frequency for that um, to, to replace um, unit 8 here, which is the uh, 1.75 megahertz um, a reference oscillator. You could replace it with the fixed frequency on this, but I'm not going to for this particular conversion. As I said, I'm going to keep it very, very simple. So I'll only be using the variable frequency output. Also, um, for this particular conversion, I'm actually not going to use the internal tuner in the radio. I'm going to make this particular set just um, suitable for um, for uh, uh, 50 ohm uh, antennas. Yep, for resonant resonant antennas. And to tell you the truth, 99% of the work that I do um, is running resonant antennas anyway. And I'll be honest with you, I've got an absolute shelf full of these things. If I want to go play backpack or um, use the internal tuner, I just grab another set. <laughs> it's as simple as that. So. Even though the tuner that I got was had, had pieces missing, I haven't gone down the road of trying to get the tuner uh, fixed. So that's the whole idea of, of this particular set. Okay, so here's our little display, our little OLED display. And what I've actually done, I've um, made a little bezel that I'm gonna um, put the OLED display in. It surprises me you can't buy these little bezels on eBay. I mean, plenty of OLED displays, but there doesn't seem to be any bezels. Maybe one day you'll be able to buy something like this for, for, for a couple of dollars made out of plastic on eBay. But I got a couple of sheets of, um, of, of some plastic. I think it was about a one or one and a half mil sheet for the front and a, and a two or a three mil sheet for the back. Doesn't really matter, something along those lines. And I've, I've very, very carefully cut those out and glued the two together to make a bezel. Okay, so... Um, Let's have a look where we're going to put this. So my plan is to, to, to flush mount the bezel about there on the radio, okay? So it's it's nice and flush, um, be, being a low profile bezel. I'll have to bring it across just to clear the, um, 
the rotating dial. That's another thing I don't have. <laughs> uh, my goodness, I'll, 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 I hope I'll pick one of them up somewhere, or I'll have to make one. But that's where the bezel's going to go, right there. So I'm going to actually uh, drill a hole uh, through here, and there's just enough space there in there behind the tuner to bring some wires in. Notice um, I've got the wires there on this particular one. I'll probably make them a little shorter. Maybe cut those little stumps off a little bit to um, to bring the to bring uh, the wires through. So I'm going to drill one hole in there to uh, to take the wires through, and I'm going to mount the um, the little OLED in in the back of this um, in the back of this little bezel. I'm going to probably use a little bit of um, silicon compound on each corner just to put it in there. Uh, not permanently fixed. If I ever need to take it off and change it, it'll it'll be easy. You can just prise it out. Okay, so that's that's the whole idea of. Um, of the display, so we're going to put the display in there. Now these other two holes here that were formerly for the tuner, one's going to be for the um, for the encoder, and the other one's going to be for the potentiometer for the receive. Okay, so we'll we'll talk about that later on. So um, the two holes here will be will be incorporated with uh, two two new rotary uh, devices, and they'll probably have some um, nice matching knobs that I've got some spares off to to fit on to sort of um, fit with the character of the radio. So let's have a look inside what the plan is. Well, this is the plan that we're going to do in this particular conversion. Just remember again, we're trying to keep this as simple as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to, um, we're going to leave the synthesizer and I'm going to leave all the rotary knobs. So even though they're not used, they'll still be in place. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take this plate off from the bottom here. I'm going to move the uh, this rack out to the service position. I'm going to disconnect the supplies on the back of the synthesizer, and I'm going to move um, those supplies, the ones that I require, um, on a piece of cable around to this area of the radio here. And all the conversion is going to be done on this side of the radio. So virtually, we can put this side of the radio to sleep. Okay. Right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to, um, these four stalks here, I'm going to mount a, a little board on these stalks, and, and on those stalks I'm going to mount um, the, um, of course, the, uh, the little, um, the DDS, the DDS is going to mount on, on those, on, on this little bit of, little bit of board on here, and uh, also on that board, um, I'm going to put in the circuitry required. And there's only a very, very limited amount of a basic circuitry that's going to accompany um, our little board. And of course, the wires will go from that to the display and from there to the two holes with the potentiometer and the encoder and a couple of buttons underneath. So that'll take care of all of the VFO section. From, the, from that VFO section, a cable will go, a variable frequency oscillator will go to the uh, 3A board and another cable will go down to the 6 board. And I'll probably use the existing cable that going down to the six board already. So it'll be virtually be one one cable across there joined onto the board, another one going across and, and married in with the um, with the uh, the cable going down to the six board. That'll put virtually take care of the of the variable uh, frequency oscillator. But um, I'm also going to need a two kilohertz generator um, to um, to run the the tone the uh, the. The tuning tone okay so um i'm going to also mount in this area here i'm going to mount a little um little uh circuit that's uh pre-bought it's, it's already uh, it's already been it's a module and and that module generates uh two kilohertz um square wave and of course that's going to go over uh, through the same little cable and it's going, going to go onto the 1a board and that's going to produce the uh the tone okay guys so virtually that's going to be it it's going to be a very, very simple conversion. And, um, and of course, um, there'll, there'll be um, a 110 volt potentiometer there to vary the, the tuning voltage for the, for the tuner, which is right here. That's why I chose to, to, uh, to virtually um, mount everything on this side of the board, because all of the connections from the VFO are all on this side of the radio. Um, so, yeah, making it very, very simple. So that's the plan. Okay, we've just made a start. We've uh, we've moved the um, the plate here to the service position and rescrewed it from underneath. Just a couple of screws in there to hold it out there. And the first thing that I've done, I've disconnected all of the cables that aren't used anymore, um, power supply wise, to the uh, to the synthesizer. So I've I've disconnected the uh, the pin 19, which is the three volt. Um, 
pin 15, which is the 110 volt. Um, there's a two kilohertz generator um, in the synthesizer that comes out on 13. We've disconnected that as well. And also um, I've disconnected the six volt wire. Okay. Now I'm gonna need some of these cables over the other side. Oh, there's another one uh, also that I've disconnected as well. Uh, coming out of the, um, the unit eight, there's the, there's the, uh, the 1.75 um, uh, megahertz from the uh, reference oscillator that goes into the, um, into the synthesizer. Just, just here, I've disconnected that link as well, okay? So um, yeah, that's uh, out of the way as well, all good. And there's the numbers of, if you're interested in the numbers on the, um, on the, uh, the back of the reference oscillator. Yeah, if you're looking for the numbers, there they are. Okay, right, so um, after doing that um, and making sure that I am getting uh, the, right, the right pins here to, uh, to, to check to make sure the voltages are the correct cables, I've, I've run, um, uh, I'm going running a cable here that's going to connect all of the relevant um, uh, supplies and whatnot that I need. I'm going to run that over to the other side of the radio. Okay, so I've, I've connected up, um, I need a, a 12 volt supply over the other side to run my, my, um, my DDS. Um, I need a 3 volt supply that I've connected to the white wire that I, um, that I need to, to run my 2 kilohertz tone generator because Remember, the two kilohertz is usually generated in the synth, but not anymore. So we're going to use a little aftermarket tone generator circuit already built up to generate that tone. And we need the three volts to power that. Uh, 24 volts. I need 24 volts over the other side. But of course, remember, I don't have a power supply. And I may be, may be going to generate the 110 volts over the other side of the set over here. Um, with a uh, with a high voltage generator here and I may make a simple um, power supply here for the 3, 6 and 12 volts that'll look after the other uh, radio so it'll have um, 3, 6 and 12 here and 110 generated at the other side but um, if you've got a proper power supply then you don't need that uh, you won't have to um, generate 110 over the other side so you just pick it up from here so you would uh, you would connect um, the yellow wire um, in, in this case wouldn't be the 24 volts it would be the 110 so you'd be taking the 110 over the other side from here okay and last of all or well not last of all we've got um an earth and i've picked a, a, an earth up straight out of the power supply uh, onto the back of the um the reference oscillator so i've picked up an earth i've connected that to my green wire and i'm going to have to bring two kilohertz back from the other side of the radio over here and that's going to go onto the uh the terminal here i think it's number yeah, that's the black wire there. It's at six or seven or something. Uh, what is it? Um, uh, yep, wire six. Okay. So wire six um, here is 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 the input from the tone generator uh, over the other side, and that will uh, that's a filtering circuit on this little board here, and it comes in here as a square wave and goes out as a sine wave, and that's the tone when you hit the uh, PTT. Okay, so I'm going to neaten up all these cables now and I'm going to route them over here and take them over the other side so that I have everything that we need on this side of the radio and we can close this side of the radio back up. Won't have to touch that again. Okay. Right, we've moved on um, and we're up here at the turret now, our next port of call. Um, 3H board, 3A board. The 3H board, that used to be the board that used to generate the variable frequency oscillator for the set. Don't need that anymore. We're replacing that with the DDS. So I've completely removed that, that board. That was the little board that was in there. No longer required. Used now for spares. Okay, so after getting that out of the way, there's basically only three cables here that we're really interested in. Um, there's the this cable here. Um, this particular one goes from here down to the number six board. Uh, to I think the terminal 24 down there. That's the um, that's the variable frequency going down to the six board. So that'll that that's going to be connected to our our new DDS. We've got this far one over here. This is the voltage one. Um, the variable DC voltage is going to go into there, and that's that's um, that's fed from the little rheostat on the front of the uh, the front of the set. And this one here, the last one, this will be the the variable frequency um, from the 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 DDS to run the 3A board. 
all of the redundant cables, um, I've pulled them back and blanked them off with a little bit of um, um, a heat shrink, like I've done with this one, and tucked them in underneath, so don't really need those anymore. So basically, I say three cables, um, variable frequency oscillator down to the six board, variable frequency oscillator into the three A board, and a variable DC that's going to come in for our tuning, and that's going to come from a rear stat on the front of the, um, the front of the set. Okay, remember the little uh, bezel that I made up? Well, I've just mounted the uh, the little OLED, um, our readout OLED in, in the um, in the bezel, and all I've done is just put it in place and tucked a little bit of silicon um, silicon compound around the outside there just to hold it in place. If you ever need to get it out, just prise it out with a screwdriver and just replace it with another one if need be. Notice we've got four connections on the back, and they're the four connections that are going to be wired remote back to the um, to the DDS that's going to fit inside the um, this part of the radio, just in, in here, actually. Okay, so next thing that I'm thinking about here is um, I'm going to mount this um, round about there on the on the radio. So yeah, this will be um, this will be uh, mounted somewhere around about this neck of the woods. Yep, and I'm going to have to drill. Um, probably around about the, the the 14, 15 and 16 on the mod scale. Three little holes in there and then I'm going to elongate those holes to make a slot and that slot is going to take the um, take those little pins and they're going to go inside the board and we're going to have some uh, remote cables soldered onto those um, pins and they will make their way to the back here where we're going to mount the DDS. Okay, so I've already checked behind the tuner and uh, behind the tuner, there's um, there's enough um, space to uh, to accommodate the wires and the as long as these don't protrude through too far, um, it should be cleared under there as well. So after I've done that, I'll just make sure exactly where I've drilled the hole so you can see that, and um, we'll just go from there. Okay, I grabbed a four and a half millimeter drill and drilled uh, a couple of holes there and elongated them. And I uh, just gave them a file out to get rid of the um, the burrs. So that went in in mod spot 14, 15, and 16. That's where I drilled that in. And the um, let's have a look at how the uh, how the little readout's going to fit there. There you go. It's going to fit just perfect. Okay. So that's going to be our little almost flush bezel uh, air position for our our readout. So that'll eventually just have um, four little dabs of glue, one on each corner, and um, it'll be in place. Moving right along. Right. Next, I've been um, I've been busy in the turret area, <coughs> and this is the um, this is the um, the three A board. You notice the three H board's been removed, uh, as per I mentioned earlier. Okay. Well, basically, I've um, I've made three connections here. I've spliced um, a tiny little bit of coax onto this uh, coax cable here. This is the one that goes down to the number six board. This is for the uh, the VFO frequency for the uh, number six board. And I've run a new piece of coax in here and joined it on to the uh, to the three A board here. This is the um, the VFO coming into the three A board. So we've got uh, yep, both of those connections uh, will be made through those two coaxes. And over here, I've um, I've soldered on a wire, and that's going to be the um, the tuning very cap voltage that's going to come in from the um, from the 110 volt um, potentiometer, so we can tune our receive. And um, what I've done, um, I've got the plate. This is the uh, plate that covers the, uh, and I've trimmed a piece off of it, so um, I can still get access to this area here, and that'll bring that'll be where I bring the cables out here. Uh, coming across going to my boards so next job will be just four screws in there and that part of the uh, the job's complete okay there's the um, the plate cut and screwed in okay moving on to the next step of the um, of the conversion so I'll just put that down there where it's a bit safer that's front okay so now I'm starting to think about the um, the actual uh, DDS that I'm that I'm going to uh, use in this job, and I've, I've mentioned where to get this before, Oz QRZ. But uh, unlike this prototype here that I've put together as a, uh, a workshop model, notice the um, the OLED displays uh, mounted, you know, off board. So what I've decided to do is uh, use that one for the uh, for this particular. <coughs> This particular project and rather than uh, have things coming off one side of the board and then the other side of the board 
I've decided to mount everything off one side of the board. So I can mount the board and, and mount all of the uh, peripherals like the uh, encoder, uh, push buttons, etc., um, on the front of the radio and just uh, remote connection to the board. Okay. So that's the that's the whole idea there. So we'll, we'll move over here and have a bit of a look at um, at what we've done. Um, you notice I've got a lot of um, wires sticking out of there. So let's have a bit of a look at what I'm what I'm doing. Okay. To start, the little um, micro size um, little switches that come with with the uh, with the kit. I found them to be way too small for what I want. So I've actually gone to uh, AliExpress. I know I had to buy like a hundred of them or something. I don't know. They didn't cost much, but uh, these are very, very uh, bigger physical buttons. Um, so here we go. Let's have a look at the, uh, the front of the radio. I might just um, turn it over and we'll continue. Looking at the front of the radio, um, I think I've mentioned this before. I've cut a slot in there to take those cables for the readout because that's where the readout's going to be mounted flush on there. And um, I've put the encoder into, into that hole there. And by the way, the hole's much bigger than the encoder. So I actually got two O-rings and put them over the encoder to fill up the hole. Um, so it fits nice and snug. So it fits actually very, very well in there. Um, the tuning potentiometer um, I've mounted, mounted in there and um, uh, that fits really nice. We'll have a look at that from the other side in a minute. And the thing that I'm really proud about is these um, these two these buttons that I've now got from um, from AliExpress, um, I've drilled seven millimeter holes and they're almost flush. Look and listen. Hear them clicking away? Perfect. So they're not protruding much at all. Um, perfect for um, for not getting knocked around and aesthetically looking good. <laughs> so if we go inside and have a look at the inside. Um, You'll see um, all of the connections that I've made from all of those um, buttons, potentiometers, and encoders. And they're going to go up onto a board that I'm going to mount um, on these stalks. And we'll get to that next. And I'm going to put the, um, I'm going to mount the, um, the main uh, DDS on there and wire it all up um, at that point. Okay, just before I forget, the, the potentiometers that I use. Um, to do this job, I get them from China, right? They're the only place I can find them, these things in the whole world. WH5-1A, 47K. But you can see the size of those compared to a standard potentiometer. And these are way too big, way too big for um, fitting in, into small spaces. They're also a bit thick. So uh, yeah, they're the ones that I use. Again, I had probably had to order, um, you know, 10 or something, but they don't cost much, which is good. Okay, so um, they're the potentiometers that I've used for the tuner, the receiving tuner. Okay, at this time I just like to discuss power supplies. You will recall that my REC radio, this is the one that I've changed to my Mark III DDS, uh, had no power supply and um, I've been forced to actually make a power supply. And this is the uh, power supply that I've sort of put together, but a little bit of history first. Um, there's been quite a few people in the past use these um, little um, uh, DC to DC step up and step down modules um, to make and make power supplies. And, and this particular power supply here has been made by a gentleman that I know in Canada, uh, Paul. And it's an absolute beautiful piece of work. He's um, designed the, um, the, the PC board um, specifically for this, created the um, the plug socket, everything. So he's got the three volt, the six volt, and the 12 volt, and the high volt, 110 volts here. All right, now this is the one, this is one that Paul's created. Um, and I myself created a similar a power supply that I don't have anymore, that um, in fact, I did the same thing, but mine was nowhere near as beautiful as this one. <laughs> but look, I'm gonna be very honest um, with, with what I think. Um, it's because this is my video and I put on it what I think. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I find these power supplies, they're very um, noisy, right? They work, but um, the amount of noise that they generate, it, it, to, to my way of thinking, is excessive. Um, sorry. I, I know that there's people out there that use these um, power supplies made up with these little modules. And um, there's another chap that I know, Craig, 
over in Spain, um, who's very keen on these power supplies, and he's actually reduced the noise in his to what he claims is almost zero. And I have to take my hat off to him because uh, he's a better man than I am. But uh, look, there it is. Um, and what I've, I've decided to do in my particular um, project here, hello puss, we've just had a visitor jump up here. <laughs> what I've decided to do is, um, is in fact not use uh, this type of power supply. Um, there it goes, all well and good. So I've come up with something a little bit uh, revolutionary um, as far as power supplies are concerned. And I'd like to bring it up at this point too, that if you have a standard clams and power supply, there's, you, don't need to, you don't need to think about any of this because you'll simply use your standard power supply um, and, and carry on and do the, do the conversion. But unfortunately, I don't have a power supply. So I've got to make one, all right? But I was lucky enough to have an original plate, an original plug socket. So I've bought these little units uh, from AliExpress, these little um, LM, uh, LM uh, units. And these particular little boards, are, they're like a dollar thirty, I think, dollar thirty each. And you can get them in 12 volt, 6 volt, and 5 volt. So what I've done, I've bought three of them. Uh, I've got a 12 volt, a 6 volt, and a 5 volt. And I've dropped the 5 volt voltage down by just using a string of diodes. They're underneath that uh, that little bit of heat sink there. And um, that little string of diodes there drops the voltage down to about 3.6. Okay, so initially I put, I put this into service um, and run the radio. Um, and to tell you the truth, um, we had some heating problems because what we're trying to do, we're trying to regulate from 28, 26, 27, depending on your battery, down to very, very low voltages. So the currents are going through these LM power regulators um, may be small, but when you look at the multiply that current by the voltage drop across the uh, device, uh, the power dissipated is quite high. So in, 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 a, um, in a move to reduce the, um, the heat generated on these um, LM devices, uh, that incidentally are very quiet. <laughs> There's no noise involved as far as I'm concerned. I've actually um, mounted, you can see it there, um, an LM350K um, variable voltage regulator on the side of the frame of the radio. This drops the, um, the 24, 25, 26 volts, whatever your battery is, down to 15 volts. And then that 15 volts is then applied uh, to the board in place of the 24 volts. So the voltage drop across these LM devices is now very, very acceptable. And look, to tell you the truth, they hardly get hot at all. Six volt would get slightly warm. That'd be about it. Okay, but that's looking at the 12, 6 and 3 and a bit volts that we need for our, um, our uh, uh, DDS conversion. But there's also an, another voltage here involved, which is a high voltage that we're using to generate... Um, high voltage to run the uh, the receive um, uh, in the tuner. Okay, so we need a, a variable a DC voltage that ranges, and I've done tests here. Uh, it ranges from about six volts up to about 80, maybe 77. So we don't need 110, all right? Maybe six up to about 77 is the range that we need to um, to actually carry out the tuning. So what I've done here, and I'll just, I'll just stand the radio up. What I've done here, I've created um this my boards are stacked um i've created this particular stack board as my high voltage board okay so i've actually used one of these typical yeah i don't i don't like type boards um this is the nixie tube um version it's a pretty old one it's a very small one and it um it boosts the voltage from somewhere around 24 or 12 up to you know pretty high voltages and I've incorporated one of these because I just simply have to. But I've decided that I really, really need to filter this thing to get it to work um, to my satisfaction. So this is what I've done. I've um, brought the input, the 24 volts uh, input, and I've put it through the same filter that I use for the DDS, which is a, a large capacitor, a very low value resistor, and another capacitor. And this generally isolates any uh, input noise coming back from the device um, into the into the uh, DC of the of the radio to transmit that noise throughout other voltages. So, sort of a a noise isolation on the input side. And coming out of the of the device, which I incidentally I've got set for 85 volts, 
uh, it's all I really need. So we come out of here and I've, I've run it through this filter device. And I've bought this board from AliExpress as well. And what it is, it's a capacitor um, and two nice little inductors and another capacitor. But these little boards only come in 50 volts and 25 volts, nowhere near a high enough voltage to, uh, to do the output filtering on, this, um, on this, uh, this device here. So what I've done, I've removed the capacitors and I replaced them with um, 100, 100 volt capacitors. And these um, capacitors, are in conjunction with the inductors, do the output filtering, which works extremely well, I must say. And then from here, my 85 volts goes down to the, um, the potentiometer. And across the potentiometer, I've got another 10 microfarad capacitor uh, to smooth it even again. And then the, um, the voltage then comes back up and into the tuner section here uh, to run the, um, the very cap diode DC voltages for the tuning. And I must say, and I've had the, had the set on the air, very, very quiet. So I'm very, very happy with this um, replacement power supply. Uh, unit units <laughs> that um, that are in fact uh, are, are replacing a standard power supply. So I'll just take I'll whip this board off and I'll I'll show the in, the inside um, mounting of this um, particular regulator if anybody's interested. Okay, there's the inside of the mounting of the uh, the, the the LM three fifty K. You'll notice um, I've had to put the um, the connection um, to the to the uh, to the transistor on the outside rather than on the inside um, because the um, the distance that I've got to work in from about here through there is very low um, because there's a filter um, if you look under there there's a filter there that folds back in place and it goes pretty close up against this plate. So um, yeah, outside of the filter, just over here, it's not a problem. So consideration's got to be given to try and make this as um, as flat as possible, so to speak. So I've I've put um, a resistor inside that um, bit of sleeving there that goes around and onto an earth connection, uh, the main set earth connection, and um, I've trimmed back the little legs on the um, on the LM350 and put the um, connection to the frame of the. Um, LM250, um, which is the output um, right up against the edge so that um, I can fit it because you don't want to be closing the um, closing the board back down again to find that you're earthing something out in this um, in this area here. So yeah, a little bit of precaution there, a bit of pre precise drilling and um, yep, works absolutely brilliantly, doesn't even get warm. Um, gets the voltage down around 15 volts so that the um, the rest of the power supply can work within its limits. Okay, just like in my uh, video of my DDS conversion mark one and two, you need to install this, um, this short to earth. Um, there's a logic gate in here that's controlled by the synthesizer that allows for transmission. Um, sort of in the um, original version, unless the set had um, locked on frequency, it wouldn't allow transmission. So it had to be bypassed because we don't have a synth anymore. So you can have a look there. Um, simply connection onto there, onto there. And that'll uh, fix all that part of the uh, conversion. Okay, let's have a look at our stack that it replaces the tuner. Okay, um, there'll be a lot of people going shock horror at this, but anyway, here it is. Right, so um, on the first first layer, we've got the um, the actual DDS, which is a very, very small little unit, as you recall. And the DDS uh, filtering for the input to the DDS, it's on there as well. Also, I've got the 100 and, well, it's 85 volts in my, in my case, the high voltage distribution here, where we've got the, um, the tap-offs going down to the... Um, to the rear stat there for the uh, for the tuning for the DC high volts tuning, and I've got the um, the 10 microfarad capacitor across the the rear stat that gives me that final bit of filtering for the DC uh, to reduce the noise. Very very good, and it works excellent by the way. Okay, in the second stack, we've got um, the two kilohertz tone generation board that I bought from AliExpress. All I needed to do was um, 
simply uh, set the the frequency and the um, and and the uh, well. There's two controls on the board. One's for the frequency, and one is for the uh, not the amplitude. The um, well, the amount of on and off for the square wave of generation. So you can vary uh, more off than on. So what I did, I just varied it for 50-50, so it's on and off, similar to a sine wave. So when it gets converted from here over in the 1A board, we end up with a nice sinusoidal, uh, 2 kilohertz sinusoidal signal for the uh, ANT. And you'll recall that the ANT uh, works exactly the same as any other Klansman with a reflector meter into a resonant antenna. Still use it as a, a tuning guide for your antennas. Okay, also in, in here we've got the output. Um, of the of the variable frequency oscillator uh, from the DDS, and that's separated into two. And you'll have a look, we'll have a look at that on the drawing, where we're able to adjust the amplitude of of the um, of the two signals. The first one going to the tuner, and the second one going to the number six motherboard. And they both have to be in the vicinity of um, 300 millivolts peak to peak. And the second one that's tuned. Uh, that goes down to the um, to the uh, number six motherboard is tuned down there. There is a bit of a, a voltage divider down there that reduces the voltage, so it's tuned to 150 volts um, peak to peak down there on the uh, on the number six motherboard. And of course, the top layer, as I mentioned before, is the high voltage generation filtering input filtering output that works extremely well, giving me a lovely quiet uh, radio. Okay, so I think. It's getting pretty close to trying this thing on the air. Okay, just put the set all back together again, but uh, no frame on it as yet. All right, well, we'll turn it on and just see how it operates. Uh, so notice one thing interesting is the instant startup, <laughs> which I like. So there you go. Boom, it's on already. Okay, it's just waiting for the, 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 the variable voltage control to come up. There he is. So there's our VFO there, nice and flush on the front. Yeah, we can change the frequency. And with a push of a button here, we can change that from 1K steps to 5K steps to 100 hertz steps. So, yeah, that's very good for fine tuning. Okay, so at the moment it's on, um, it's on ant. It's connected into a dummy load. Take it home and tell your mum. You can hear the nice little oscillator that's happening there. The, uh, the little 2k oscillator that we installed okay so i'll slip her up on the low power a little bit of talking uh testing one two three four yep not a problem high power address it again one two three four i've tested the power uh, power outputs and they're to the clansman standards which is fantastic so it's working absolutely brilliantly and, and the uh, receive is simply um, adjusted by the potentiometer here. You can't hear it because it's not tuned into any station but simply uh, by varying the potentiometer here we can tune in the, um, the receive station at that frequency so not a problem. There's our power supply in operation there. Nice little red LEDs on each, uh, each of the um, each of the uh, the power supplies so the radio works extremely well so um, the next job is to get it on the air notice how it's nice and quiet very very quiet it's um yeah it's got no none of that hiss associated with uh, power supplies with the noise yeah i've got to make a few enemies with that i know but uh, <laughs> uh look think outside the square that's what i've done with this here yeah, would that cost me 10 bucks or something it's incredibly incredibly good quiet power supply so okay but the, the problem arises um with uh, a standard set where where would you put the high voltage board <laughs> uh, again i'll stress that if you've got a good power supply that um that's a standard clansman power supply there's no need to go through all of this elaborate uh, creation of a power supply and a, and a high voltage because you, you already you already have it in your standard power supply but just to remind you again this radio came as a junked radio without any power supply so we had to create one up oh, well while i think about it um I'm, I'm short bolts for this particular radio as well so i had to order some right and here they are here 
no trouble at all. Um, I know I, I've, I've mentioned AliExpress quite a lot, but um, they're pretty good. They've got a bigger selection, I find, than eBay, and their um, delivery from China is, is within two weeks, and I have never had any problem with them, and they're much cheaper. Okay? So they're, they're four, four millimeter by 25 millimeter long. Allen's head screws. <clears throat> All the way from AliExpress, I don't know, a couple of dollars there. And I've got a new set of screws for the radio. There you go. Before I close the radio up, I just want to um, touch on lower sideband. Um, I mentioned earlier that I was going to leave this radio upper sideband. But if someone who was doing this conversion decided that they wanted to go lower sideband, and I may do this uh, in the future as well, um, you, you, you do recall that the, the, the DDS, the little DDS, the, uh, the one from Oz, oh, what is it, ozqrp.com, <coughs> it's got um, a variable frequency out, output and also a, uh, a fixed frequency output that I haven't used. So it's, it's simply um, a plug on the board. So if you look on the board, um, those two plugs on the board there, um, one's for variable frequency um, oscillator and the other one's a fixed frequency oscillator. So you could use the fixed frequency oscillator to run your lower sideband, simple as. But um, be aware that the wave shape coming out of the fixed frequency oscillator is nowhere near sinusoidal. It needs to be tidied up. So if I was going to do it, this is how I'd simply do it. I'd I'd take the output from the from the fixed um, frequency oscillator and I'd route it back across here, same way. Yep, I'd probably run it on a little coax cable. And I'd, I'd run it back um, over here. And here's the, uh, the reference oscillator. I'd simply um, take the three screws out of the back of the, the, the reference oscillator and completely remove this um, out of the set completely. And then I'd put some little standoffs on the, um, on the holes that, came, that this was mounted on. And I'd mount um, some Vero board on here, maybe one or two stack, stacks. There's plenty of depth there. And on that little Vero board, I'd mount, uh, first of all, a lovely little filter to get the um, irregular uh, wave shape to a nice sinusoidal wave shape. And then I would put in a, um, a load. And these particular uh, VFOs run on a 50 ohm load with a, a variable um, potentiometer to control the um, the output wave amplitude and uh, that would be it feed it back into the reference on the set and uh, simple so I just come to the couple of buttons on the front here and I would just program the fixed frequency oscillator for upper or lower sideband depending on what I wanted to operate probably take fully one minute to change the set from a upper sideband set to a lower sideband set just by simply um, re-entering re, uh, the different frequency required. Yeah, so that would be a very, very simple job as well. And I, I may do that uh, in the future, but we'll see how we go. But very, very simple. And when we hit the, um, the pencil and paper, I'll actually draw that circuit up if anybody's interested in it, and I'll put it in there just in case someone wants to uh, incorporate that in their, um, in their conversion. Okay, before we get down to the pencil and paper, let's have a look on the print, what we're actually going to do. Here's the synthesizer here. What we're going to do is we're going to disconnect all the supplies from the synthesizer, the 6 volt, the 3 volt, and the 110 volt. Uh, they'll be disconnected at the back of the synthesizer, and they're going to connect onto our cable that goes across to the tuner side of the radio. Okay, pretty easy. We're also going to pick up an earth as well, which will be good. Okay, coming out of unit 8, which is right next to it, that's the reference oscillator, we've got a, a square wave 1.75 megahertz that goes into here, the clocking main uh, clocking frequency for the old synthesizer. We're going, to, we're going to take that link off there. But this unit here also supplies a nice sinusoidal wave out of here that goes down for our carryout frequency. And that's going to remain in. All good? So that more or less makes our synthesizer redundant. Okay, so I'm moving across to the turret. Here's the 3H board here. That's going to be removed completely. And we're going to replace that with the DDS, two outputs from our DDS. Um, one of them will go down to the number six motherboard up here. And that test point L there, that's where we've got to set up our 150 
uh, millivolts peak to peak to run out our transmit side of the radio. And if we follow this cable here, it goes down across and to our three A board, which is in the turret. And that's going to be our variable frequency oscillator for the turret for our receive. But we also need the very cap control voltage, and this is this is it here. This very cap control voltage. This is the one that's going to come from our potentiometer on the front of the radio, and that goes into the very caps for the tuning on the um, on the turret. Okay. So basically, that's all the changes that we're going to do. Um, out of uh, the synthesizer also comes a two kilohertz um, generation. And that two kilohertz is for the tone frequency for when you hit the ANT <laughs> uh, to tune in your your um, your uh, little meter. What do we call it? The, the 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 tuning meter. I've forgotten the name of it. Anyway, that that particular uh, two kilohertz is going to be generated over next to the uh, the turret uh, on one of our stack boards, and that cable there um, has has to come from the other side. So. We'll go over to behind the 1A board on Terminal 6. We'll take it off Terminal 6 and we'll put a new cable onto Terminal 6 that'll come across from our little tone generator that we're going to install over on the tuning side of the radio. Okay, and basically that's, that's all of the, the changes that need to be made to get rid of our synthesizer, get rid of our, um, our 3H voltage control oscillator and replace them with a DDS. So let's hit the paper and pencil and have a look and see how this all works. Okay, I've put the pencil to paper. Let's have a look at what I've come up with. All right, we needed to run a lot of cables from behind the, the original synthesizer, disconnect them from the synth and, um, and get them over to the tuner side of the radio. So I, I went down the road and I bought some six core alarm cable. I thought that was pretty good. And um, it was about the right size to do the job. Okay, so I, I got the 12 volts. I needed that to get across there to run my, uh, my DDS. So I made that the red core. Uh, three volts, I needed that across there to run my two kilohertz generator. I needed, um, either 24 volts to run my high voltage um, uh, a generation device over there. Remember, I didn't have a power supply. But if I did have a power supply, I would simply run the 110 volts over the, over to the tuner side of the radio and, and, um, and, and use it over there to, uh, to create the variable voltage for the very caps. I decided to put that in the yellow core uh, I needed an earth, so I grabbed an earth from over there from behind the synthesizer, made that the green core, and I needed to run the two kilohertz back from the tuner side of the radio to my um, 1A board, terminal six, to, uh, to form um, a nice square wave there that would be trans transferred or transformed into a sinusoidal wave that would run my tone for my ANT. Okay, and I had a spare core that was end up a blue core. Okay, and uh, that was the white cable you've seen uh, in my conversion running from behind the synth over to the tuner side of the radio. In order to determine how, how high a voltage I required from my high voltage side, remember I didn't have a power supply, so I'd have to create some high voltage. I did a test on, the, on a good radio on the 10, 15, 20, and 40, and 80 meter bands, and looked at the spread of the very cap voltages across the, the bands. And you'll notice that on, on the 10 meter band, 50 volts up to 70. On the 15 meter, meter band, only 11 volts up to 12. The 20 meter band, from 13 up to 15. The 40 meter band, 43 up to 50, 54. And the 80, 80 meter band, 12 up to about 18. So looking at the spread there, probably around about, I don't know, from 11 volts up to 70 volts would be good enough to do the complete tuning for the whole radio on all the bands. So I've taken that up to about 85 supply volts to give me that spread across all my bands so that I've got ample voltage to tune in any frequency on any band. 
Okay, when we get over onto the tuna side, you'll, you'll, you'll recall there's um, three stacked little boards that I've made. The board closest to the radio, the one at the bottom, just behind the faceplate, that's stack one. And this is what I've put on stack one. Stack one, I've mounted my DDS, okay? And I've created a little filtering circuit for the input of the DDS, because it's recommended that some noise can be generated in these uh, DDS units and it can get back out into your power supplies. So a couple of 220 microfarad uh, capacitors and a very low value resistor there makes a very, very um, effective little filter to drive the, um, the DDS. Simple as that. And next to that, I had a little bit more space on the board there. And this is where I've done the voltage divider network for my high voltage. So after it's created on another board, the output 80, 85 volt filter, the output comes down here. Okay, and this is the resistor network that I've put, put through. That's the wiper on the, um, on the potentiometer. And that goes off to my very caps on 3A board that tunes in my receive. I've also put a 10 microfarad, 160 volt capacitor across there as a final tuning device, I should say a final filtering device to ensure my, my, my DC high voltage is pretty smooth. And it works very well, it's very noiseless. Okay. We go down here and have a look on stack two. Stack two is where I've brought the output from the DDS on stack one. So the, the variable frequency oscillator comes up from stack one into this network on stack two. And the way that I've set this up is to give the DDS a nice 50 ohm uh, load. And there's two out, out, outlets. The first one um, goes to the number six board. The second one goes to the 3A board, okay? Uh, you'll notice there are uh, uh, those little blue uh, potentiometers, the multi-turn potentiometers that I talked about before. And both have got isolating um, capacitors that have to be in there, 10 nanofarad green caps, okay? This one here, you can set up on the board, once you get it running, to 300 millivolts peak to peak. But the one for the number six board is best set up down at the test point L on, te uh, on the back of the radio uh, on the six board, test point L, and just adjust your potentiometer here to get 150 volt, uh, millivolts peak to peak, and that'll give you the correct voltage for the transmit side of things. Okay, pretty good so far. Lastly, on, on my uh, stack two, I've got the, um, the two kilohertz generator, which is that simple little, little um, module that I bought from AliExpress uh, that I set up to create the two kilohertz. And that runs on, uh, on the three volt supply, the 3.3 volt supply, the output of that goes back across to um, through that white cable, back across to the 1A board terminal six. And that takes that nice square wave over there and 1A board converts that to a sinusoidal wave for the tone generation. And that's everything that's on stack two. When we look on stack three, uh, that's the top stack. And remember this stack's only required if you make a power supply uh, not if you're using the standard Klan Klansman power supply, you don't need this. So this is a bit of added information for anybody that wants to do it this way. Um, this particular high frequency Nixie generator, you can buy these on AliExpress, um, they're only a few dollars and they, they boost up from between 12 and, and 24 volts up to, you know, as far as 200 odd volts and they're adjustable, okay? So here I've brought in, actually I haven't written it in, so I'll write it in now. I brought in 24 volts into this um, from the other side and I'm running the same little filter circuit that, um, that, I, that I used on the input of the DDS just to stop any um, uh, backward sort of harmonics getting onto my 24 volt supply, okay, which is a couple of um, capacitors, 220 microfarad, 50 volts. A very low value resistor in there and that isolates it enough to um, to stop anything getting back there works well okay and here I've got my generator set to 84 84 85 volts and out of the out of the generator I'm running a filter a filter circuit this was a module that I described I bought from AliExpress as well 
and they come standard for 25 volts or 50. I removed the 50 volt capacitors and installed the hundreds um, in their place um, to, uh, to give me the, 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 the required filtering and it works very, very well. And out of, out of that filter, uh, one side to earth, out of that filter goes down to the 85 volt very cap tuning input on stack one. And that runs through the, uh, the voltage divider network gives you the final uh, tuning voltage for the 3A board. Okay, you'll recall in my particular um, instance, I didn't have a power supply. So I decided that I would use these LM uh, power supplies um, that, I, that I managed to pick up from, uh, from Ali, AliExpress. Okay, and um, these units you, you, I've, I've shown them in earlier parts of the video. I've mounted them on the um, on the on an original plate and, and made up a, an alternate power supply. So let's see how that works. You'll recall that I said that uh, applying 24 volts to these to these these particular units, uh, the power dissipation was way way too high, and they were getting very hot, especially the six volt one. So I had to reduce the voltage down. To get it to a, a workable level so that these three modules could produce the correct voltages and not overheat so i, I ran a, a, an lm 350k in a to3 case so the wire that goes on the plug that plugs into the power supply i cut that wire and i ran one 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 end of it the uh, the 24 volt end to the lm 350 um, and they're the resistors that i used to set up around about 15 volts out of it and from the other side the output I went back up and connected back onto the wire that goes onto the power supply from the behind the little plug so I cut the the, the wire and ran two wires from it down to the LM 350 one, one down and one back and this is one coming back with the 15 volts and that supplies the three units in the um, in, in our power supply position um, Got my 12 volt standard, 6 volt standard, um, and I managed to get the, th the 5 volts down to about 3 point something or other by using three diodes there in series. And again, I, I must I must admit this is a very very quiet power supply. It may not be the most e energy efficient. I'm losing uh, power in heat here, a very very small amount, and I'll, I'll be losing power in heat generated there as well. Whether the original Klansman battery lasts as long as it would in a standard set i don't really know and i'll be honest with you i don't really care if the battery goes flat a little earlier i always carry a spare so i just bung it on anyway but uh hey it may last as long as a normal battery in a clansman does um i don't really know so we'll find that out as, as thing goes as time goes along but um there you go guys that's all to do with the circuitry of of the renovation to the original circuitry for um the DDS uh, Mark III. Um, as I said before, um, I would include this circuit. If you feel adventurous and, um, and you'd like to um, also include in your um, conversion a lower sideband, this is easily done using the fixed um, DDS output. So what you would simply do is remove your unit eight completely um, out, of the, um, out of the unit and replace it with, uh, with this circuit. So out of your fixed output on the DDS uh, comes a pretty rough a square wave that needs to be smoothed up to sinusoidal. And this lovely little filter arrangement here will do that for you quite easily. So through the filter um, into a 50 ohm load, okay, because that's what these things are designed to generate into. And um, of course, we're using one of those nice little blue multi-turn potentiometers there that I mentioned earlier. And... Um, out of the potentiometer um, through a 10 nanofarad um, capacitor for isolation and you end up with a nice smooth sinusoidal wave that we can vary for upper and lower sideband. The uh, amplitude is 300 millivolts peak to peak and they're the frequencies that you set up on your DDS front panel for both upper and lower sideband and of course after you uh, uh, remove the, the unit uh, 8 out of the set um, you connect up these two terminals here to the, the coax cable that, that used to go onto the unit 8 and that's at terminals 4 and 5 and that shoots off down to the um, 
number six motherboard with your carrier frequency. And it's as simple as that. And by um, programming from the front panel, uh, which probably I've mentioned before takes about one minute, you can change your set from a uh, upper to lower uh, sideband set and cover all the bands. So there you go, as promised. Um, I, I've tried it on the air at home here um, like this. And I might add, <laughs> uh, um, I was extremely pleased to, uh, to contact my mate in the UK straight away. First call, um, G4 AKC on the promenade at Blackpool, uh, running the radio at, at the standard 25 watts into uh, one of my uh, high efficiency couplers that I've um, developed for the 20 meter band uh, at home. Uh, so uh, I, was, I was absolutely thrilled to speak to him as a first call. But look, um, I'm going to put it back together uh, properly and we're going to test it in the park. Okay, guys. But look, um, I just want to uh, just show you a couple of the, uh, the items that I, that I use. For the, uh, for the 2K tone generation, you can actually buy these little things. Look, they're only a few dollars on AliExpress and um, it runs on about, that, that runs off the three volt, the three point whatever volt um, supply that the, uh, that the radio is now producing. And one of these little um, potentiometers here is for the, um, the frequency and the other one is for the, the on and off period of the wave. So you can get it to be on and off at the right um, uh, equal amounts and you know the right frequency. And um, the voltage that you put onto these things seems to, um, seems to uh, regulate the, the, um, the amplitude. So yeah, around about the three to four volts seems to be a great voltage to run these things. And look, rather than sit down and try and make something like this, <laughs> why would you? Why would you for a couple of bucks? Anyway, and when I did the um, the uh, on on the on the second board, the second stacked board here, um, the adjustments for the the VFO uh, peak to peak outputs for the uh, for the both the motherboard and the um, and the, uh, the the receive um, board in the in the turret, um, I incorporated these little multi turn um, uh, resistors that. Um, You'll see the value when I when I go through the theory, but they are absolutely precise, and and you can turn them and turn them and turn them and get the exact um, exact uh, 300 um, volts peak to peak, 300 millivolts peak to peak, um, much better than the uh, than the coarser single turn things uh, that I've used previously. So a bit of an improvement getting getting those. Maybe you can order those two together. Um, but there you go. Okay, there's another thing here that, that needs to be mentioned as well. Um, when the shell comes down over the top of the um, of the chassis of the radio, this area here usually in, used to incorporate the tuner, but now it doesn't, as you can see. So, but um, there's some parts that come down here that need to be modified in the shell so that they'll um, so they'll fit down through through here. Uh, notice the cabling, um, the cabling that you bring into this area, you, you sort of, um, you've got to not put it down the edge on both sides, back and front. You concentrate the cabling to the center um, of, of the area, okay? So let's have a look at the uh, the actual shell and what I've, what I've done to modify the shell. Okay, so I'll just slip that a bit. So looking at the shell, um, this little part here used to go across there somewhere. Uh, needed to be cut out, all right. And you need to go in and take the um, the little plate that went, uh, little shielding plate that shielded the tuner from the rest of the radio chassis area, so that it fits in like that. And there's a, a little, there's a little tab. You can see one just there, that little tab. There was another little tab up here, and one over there as well. They need to be just filed off. Only just takes a couple of minutes, only aluminium, and just file it off. Okay, and then. When you put the two halves together, uh, these little little uh, angle iron pieces, they'll fit neatly, neatly down in this area here. So there'll be no contact between any of this and um, and the actual shell. Okay, guys. Um, I've said this a couple of times already, but I'll just say it again. Um, if you've got a good power supply. There is no need to, to, to make a power supply. There's no need to make a dropping uh, regulator there to run any sort of a new power supply. And there's no need to make a high voltage uh, filtering um, uh, 
board there uh, with high voltage generation with an ICSI tube um, uh, circuitry. So you would simply use the standard power supply as is uh, with all the voltages as is. So all we've done is removed um, some, some um, voltage supplies here from where they used to go onto the synthesizer, left it all in place, left all the dials in place, connected up some cabling with all of those voltages, routed the cabling over to this new area, and we've done all of the DDS conversion in this area over here. Uh, you will recall um, from my previous videos on this particular radio, this was an absolute junk set. Uh, there was parts missing all over the place. My junk box was, was good enough to supply enough parts to get it back working, but the synthesizer was clapped out, and this is why we've gone to the Mark III development of this DDS. If the radio had been working in, in proper condition with a good synthesizer, uh, I would not have attempted any of these conversions. I would have simply left the radio standard. There's nothing better than a standard Klansman 320. It will just simply do everything perfect. But rather than see this thing um, uh, end up as a doorstop or an ornament, um, I've done these changes to get it back on the air and actually use it. And all of the changes that I've made, I've tried to make it in line with the aesthetics of the radio so that it just looks like a Klansman, perhaps, that's a little bit different than a, than a standard one. But, um, yep, we've lost the tuner, but that's a small sacrifice. As I said before, um, I hardly ever use the internal tuner on my radios, and I've got so many Klansman 320s that if I did want to use a tuner, whip antenna, backpack, I would simply grab another standard Klansman and use it. A little bit complicated mechanically with filing and creating and making and, and sizing, but um, that's the fun of doing it, you know. It's not done in five minutes, it's done over a period of a couple of weeks, uh, maybe even longer. But look, the finished product is a very, very lovely set to operate and it's very rewarding to be able to bring something like this, a junked radio, back to life. Well, we finally made it. We're up here at the park to test the radio out. Um, I've got it turned on at the moment. <laughs> I think that station that's uh, making a noise there at the moment, I think that's a New Zealand station. But uh, just to give you an idea of the, of the tuning, uh, I'll bring up the little speaker there. So by just varying the, the rear stand at the front here, it's as simple as that. And that's 14.233 um, at the moment. So look, I'm set up here in the boot of my car this afternoon here. I'm running my, uh, my half-wave N-fed uh, vertical. And uh, I'm running the, uh, my, my matching coupler, the ones that I market and, uh, and manufacture. And I, I do sell these all around the world, but that's beside the point at the moment. So we're going to give the radio a bit of a test. So. We're going to try and make a couple of contacts and um, and see if we can get some uh, some sort of feedback on air. At the moment, I've only got the four bolts in it just to hold it together, just to make sure it's okay. But we'll see how we go. This is Victor Kilo Two Papa Radio Charlie here. The name's Alex, mate, and I've set up my little military radio up here in the my local park on top of the hill over. Yeah, yeah, you're still there. You're about a 5x7, five 5x8 by five by to me. And uh, look, I'm a pretty low-powered station here. I'm only putting out about 25, 30 watts, over. Yeah, Roger, OK. VK2 PRC, portable VK5 GY. OK. All right, good afternoon to you. Name's Gordon, Golf Oscar Romeo Delta Oscar November. And, uh, yeah, I'm located in the small town of Laura. <laughs> Excuse me, that's Lima Alpha Uniform Romeo Alpha Laura. About 200... Um, kilometers north of uh, north of Adelaide and uh, yeah quite a good signal a bit of QSB um, and uh, but uh, yeah you're hitting up around about the S7 at, uh, at times but, uh, but uh, mostly Q5 Q5 copy there are some uh, some fairly deep uh, deep feds and um, okay on the uh, on the arrangements there with the portable uh, portable setup um, yeah I'm going to feel 
I'm sure I've come across you before sometime. It's all Klansman um, that you use, if I recall correctly. Um, anyway, doing a good job this afternoon. Uh, VK2 PRC portable, VK5 GY, over. Yeah, VK5 GY. Yeah, the name here is Alex, mate. Alpha Lima Echo X Ray. And uh, I've been working very, very. Uh, vigorously over the last few months on a uh, on one of these Klansman 320 radios trying to um, restore it from simply a pile of junk and uh, I've managed to get up here at the park this afternoon and and you're my first contact on the radio since it's been repaired so there you go mate and uh, you'll probably end up on YouTube over <laughs> okay um, uh, VK2 uh, PRC uh, <coughs> portable VK5 uh, G this is Victor Kilo, two Papa Radio Charlie. Uh, well, not pedestrian portable, but almost pedestrian portable today, calling uh, Victor Kilo 5 India Sugar Ian on his PRC 515. Over. Mate, to sit here in the park with my very, very old PRC 320, uh, talking to you on a PRC 515 all the way down there in, uh, in in South Australia, mate, that's pretty good. I'm only operating probably the same power you are, around about 25, 30 watts, over. Yeah, Ian, there's a bit of a story to this one, mate. I, I had a hip operation a little while ago, and I put out a call if anybody had a, a junk set that they would want to donate to me as a uh, as a bit of a, a, a reconstruction project. <laughs> um, and I got a taker, mate, a bloke in South Australia, his name was Brenton. He sent me a, a set here that was, uh, well, three quarters complete, completely stripped. And uh, I had parts here, and I managed to put it together and get it all working. But the synthesizer in it was cactus, mate. So I've done a DDS conversion and put a, a DDS VFO in it with a, a nice digital readout. So this is the first uh, first session on the air, over. Oh, yes and no. Yes and no, Ian. That's another story, mate. <laughs> but I tell you what, mate, I'm making a video right now, and uh, I've just about finished the, uh, the video to go up on the air, up on YouTube, mate, so you'll probably end up at the end of the video, my friend. <laughs> and you can have a look at the radio in, uh, in, in operation. I haven't got all the bolts in it yet, but uh, it's, it's complete and, uh, and working, which is really good. In fact, I even had to create a complete new power supply for it. I had nothing to start off with, so I had to uh, sort of invent uh, a different power supply than, uh, than, than what was originally in it, but it's working well, over. Well, there we have it. We've uh, we've tried it out. She works absolutely superb. A bit of a, a bit of a look at the installation here. Today. Running my uh, halfway then fed vertical, which operates very well from this local park that I operate from, and uh, finished the day off today here talking to a bloke named Spud, <laughs> who was uh, at a truck stop in South Australia having lunch on his way to. Uh, to Northern Territory up to Darwin. So there you go. Radio's working very, very well. Everybody's uh, complimenting the audio and uh, just running it on the 25 watts here and it's absolutely uh, booming all around Australia, giving me five, seven, five, eight signal strengths. So uh, extremely happy with the project. And uh, well, it's all complete now. All I've got to do is go around and put all the rest of the missing screws in and uh, she's finished. 
I'll, I'll miss it. <laughs> I'll have to get started on another project. But um, thank you very much for looking at my video. This is Victor Kilo, Two Papa Radio Charlie. If anybody's got any questions relating to this particular project, please send me a message and um, I'll be only too happy to help anybody out. 73.